Hi everybody, I'm Susan Thornton, the CEO of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, and I'm here today with Dr. Rick Straub, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Medical Officer from Sologenics. Thanks for joining us today, Rick. Thank you for having me. So, Sologenics is a biopharmaceutical company. Uh, can you share a little bit about Sologenics, the company, and your focus? Sure. Um, Sologenics is, as you mentioned, a small biopharma. Uh, company. We're located in Princeton, New Jersey. We're really focused in on rare diseases with an unmet medical need, especially in the cancer area. So we believe that CTCL is a very nice fit for what we do. Great. Well, there are 7,000 rare diseases, and I'm just curious as to why did you pick cutaneous lymphomas? Again, when we uh, look at what's available as far as new drugs, which are ready to enter into clinical trials, oncology is where we go to uh, to begin with. So certainly within that area, um, th our particular drug that we're talking about today, synthetic hyperacin, falls nicely into that group. Um, we also were very lucky to find a drug which is targeted to what we see as an important unmet medical need in mycosis fungoides, a drug which is safe enough to be used earlier in the course of the disease and for more prolonged periods than many of the alternatives. Very interesting. So can you share with us a little bit about uh, the clinical trial and the drug and what you're looking at as part of this process? Sure, I'd be very happy to do so. Uh, I think in order to understand why we believe that there's unmet medical need, you need, really need to look at what else is available for these patients. Um, and again, there are a number of drugs which are widely used, which are fairly effective. The problem with all of these drugs is that they carry with it some long-term risks. Um, most of the drugs basically operate by damaging the DNA in cells, both cancer, hopefully mainly cancer, but some healthy cells. Um, that in and of itself is how most chemotherapeutic agents work. Uh, again, very effective. The problem is, is that it doesn't always kill cells. It may leave some damaged DNA, especially in healthy cells, which one or two doses is not a big deal. However, if you are getting treated on a continual chronic basis, like most patients who have mycosis fungoides, this cumulative risk over the years and decades that they're actually treated begin to build up. If you look at the most commonly used phototherapy, um, something called PUVA, Sorolin with ultraviolet A light, uh, what you see is, again, a very effective therapy which is widely used. We're not suggesting that it's something that needs to be avoided. However, what happens here is you put Sorolin onto the lesions that's taken up by cells and then activated with ultraviolet A light. The problem is Sorolin damages DNA ultraviolet light is the dangerous portions of sunlight that cause skin cancer. And so again, um, a few doses, not a big deal, but most physicians are very reluctant to treat more than 200 times um, simply because the risk of melanoma and other skin cancers goes way up. We have a drug which we believe gets around some of these long-term safety issues. Um, the drug we have a drug called synthetic hypericin, again, is taken up by uh, the cancer cells. It kills the cells, however, through a completely different mechanism. Rather than damaging the DNA, it essentially throws the switch for the suicide pathways, a process which is known as apoptosis. Uh, to do that, we have to activate our drug, just like you see with PUVA, but rather than using ultraviolet light, we actually use a bank of fluorescent lights, just like most of us work under at work all the time. Ours is a little bit fancier, but uh, it's essentially the same light bulbs which are being used. So um, we have this drug that we believe through our phase one and phase two trials, i.e. those early sort of stage um, trials that the drug may be effective and appears to be very safe um, for patients. So we've put together a trial that we call flash fluorescent light activated synthetic hypericin. Um, it sounds classy. <laughs> um, and essentially um, 
this trial has been running for a while now. It's, we're still looking for participants um, to join the trial. The way this is set up is that we um, basically have three discrete cycles of treatment. Each of these cycles uh, is active treatment for six weeks with two week rest and then evaluation at the end. Um, patients who are interested in the trial will come in, be evaluated. Not every patient is going to qualify. Um, and so, you know, that first step is, is an important one during that evaluation. Uh, the treating physician is going to identify three lesions. Those are going to be the lesions which are treated during the first two cycles. During cycle one, um, patients will again be evaluated, including a small biopsy of one of those lesions. Patients will then be applying this uh, ointment to each of the three lesions, and then 12 to 24 hours, go to the clinic, get the light treatment, which is about a five-minute procedure. Again, you stand in front of a very bright light, and that's it. And they do that twice a week for six weeks. They take a rest and then um, get evaluated. Again, the evaluation at the end of that eight-week period is going to be exactly what they had at the baseline. They'll have a small biopsy, photographs of lesions taken, lesions measured, etc. We understand that patients would prefer to get a drug rather than get just the placebo, so uh, we have randomized this uh, such that you have a two-to-one chance of getting active drug during this particular cycle. Again, um, we understand that uh, this sort of commitment, um, you'd like to get the drug. So during cycle two, we'll be treating those same three lesions that were treated in the first cycle with active drugs so that everyone will definitely get treated in that second phase. And then, again, it's six weeks, twice a week, evaluated two weeks rest period, and then we offer a uh, open label trial where patients can or cannot participate, it's up to them, uh, where all their lesions actually get treated. One of the things that we're um, very enthusiastic about is that the patients who so far in the trial who have gone through it have overwhelmingly elected to participate in that um, third cycle, suggesting that they find benefit in, in this. The other thing, again, we don't want to make too much of it, but um, we are seeing some complete responses, which gives us hope that this drug may be as useful as we think it is. Well, that is certainly a very exciting, and thank you for sharing all about uh, the specifics of the way the drug works and the process and the trial. I think that information is always really helpful as patients look at whether or not they are interested in participating in a trial. So if you are interested in participating in this trial, you can go out to our website, the clfoundation.org, under research and under clinical trials, and you'll see the FLASH study, and it's S SGX301, and the centers that are participating are listed there. Uh, or you can go out to clinicaltrials.gov and look for the FLASH study and the SGX301 and find the information there. So is there anything else that you might want to, like to share with our uh, community before we let you go? Um, I think we would like to thank all those uh, patients who have been willing to participate. I, Clinical trials are the way that these new therapies are really evaluated and identified as being either good or not good. And we understand that it requires commitment on um, patients' parts, but we are very, very grateful for those who are willing to participate. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Straub, and we'll look forward to following the trial and see how it goes. Thanks, everybody.